Hello and welcome to Rock the Casbah Block 25. My name is Julie Hall and we're going to work through this fantastic block together. You'll see this block is very heavy on applique elements and each of those elements are curved which gives the square block a really nice geometric look. Okay so let's get our applique fabrics ready, our threads ready and we are ready to begin. First thing we're going to do is we've got our cutaway stabilizer and I'm using a poly mesh loaded into the machine and I'm going to place my piece of embroiderous felt on top of that and when I've got wash away thread in my needle I'm going to stitch colorway one to secure that embroiderous felt to the stabilizer. Using embroiderers felt really does help just to give your project that professional finish. And once we've stitched that down I'm going to come through and I'm going to trim away all of the excess fabric. Now the reason I want to do that is because I do not want extra bulk in my seams. There is nothing worse than getting to the end of your project and having to put it together particularly a quilt as you go project with incredibly bulky seams this is going to make that process so much easier once we've done this I'm going to take my cotton fabric my main fabric lay it on top of this outline and still with the wash away thread I then want to stitch colorway 2 which is going to hold that fabric down we use wash away thread because we don't want the seams to show in the final project so once we're done we're going to run a bead of water along our placement lines here and they are going to disappear. So the first color of applique fabric that I'm going to use is my deep pink. So I'm going to load my thread, my needle with deep pink and I've just got bobbin fill on the bottom. So load in my deep pink and stitch out colorway three to show where to place the applique excuse me to show where to place our applique fabric take the applique fabric and lay it down and then we're going to stitch out colorway 4 to hold that down i've used in this entire quilt four colors of um of fabrics and using my curved tip scissors um, and these are my squeezy scissors because they are perfect for getting close to applique I'm going to come through and trim away the excess fabric here and then I'm going to quickly stitch colorway 5 which is going to do a um, decorative quilting almost style design over this circle and really hold it down and allow it to show off the fabrics and once we've done that I'm going to come through and I want to stitch out colorway 6 which is going to be the applique object in the center of that circle and I am using my dark teal fabric for that now you can see I'm being quite stingy with my fabrics and it's the reason why I prefer to hand place my applique fabrics versus using a cutting machine I find I get a um, a result that's probably a little stingier on the fabric by doing it myself and now we are up to colorway 8 
which is going to start these corner elements. And the first layer of applique fabric that I'm going to lay down is my deep wine. So you can see it's very much a really deep purpley um, with just a couple of other mottled colours through it. And that was colourway 9 which is going to hold that fabric down and then I can trim around that object. And we're going to repeat this applique in all four corners of the block. Now what you will notice here is that I am leaving um, an extra quarter to half an inch of fabric just here along where the applique object forms part of the seam. And that is so that that fabric goes into the seam and doesn't leave us with um, an exposed edge. Because applique shrinks, or because embroidery shrinks in during the process, we just need that little bit of extra left in the seam there. And all will become apparent when we start putting these blocks together. So I'm just coming through and I'm working on the last of those corners. But naturally that cannot be the end because then we're going to take our medium or pale teal fabric and we're going to lay another element over the top here. So colorway and it is colorway 16 is going to come through and I can use my pale teal and you can see how I'm just able to manipulate the fabric to get the scrappiest versions of that and of course trim away the excess and then we're going to repeat that for colorways 18 and 19 2021, 22, and 23. Now I do like to trim away as I go, once again, just because I find I get a better result. You want to trim quite close to your applique. Generally, people will find that. Um, if their satin stitches are not totally covering the applique, the odds are it is a problem either with the tension or with the trimming away of the fabric. And remember, I've still got that first deep pink colour thread loaded. So we've done all of our layout with that deep pink colour thread. And now I can move on to colour stop 24, which is going to satin stitch around that circular pink object. Now it looks like my machine is doing quite a speed. Don't stress too much about that. I've actually stitched this on a speed of about five to six hundred stitches a minute. And I speed it up during the audio processing here, or the video processing, simply because you really don't want to watch me stitch for, um, this block was one of the longer blocks, and I think I spend an, about an hour, 20 minutes um, working on this block. So now I'm going to come and change over to my dark teal thread. And there's a couple of different elements that we're doing here with the dark teal. The first one, is it is coming around that inner circle and it's doing a satin stitch but it's a decorative satin stitch so it's actually a um, oval shaped satin stitch and then we're adding decorative elements use on each of those lighter teal sections So this block was one of the more um, time consuming blocks in the collection and all up I spent about an hour 20 stitching this block out. 
what I like with the decorative elements is they are all outlined to finish them off and I think it's quite subtle right up until of course when we you know lose a um, lose a thread um, it's quite subtle but it all adds to the final product and that's what we're looking for with this entire quilt it's not supposed to be one block overtaking others it really is all about giving an overall look and it's one thing I've always loved about Moroccan tiles um, I love the mismatched quality to them and yet even when they are mismatched they all match if that makes any sense having a hell of a day here on my threads um great question that that does come up what do you do when your threads keep breaking generally there are a couple of different reasons for this to happen so the first one is um, of course the quality of thread the second and I'm just re-threaded now and I'm up to colorway 26 which is the deep wine color so that's going around the outer segments of these semicircles um, so yes when your thread breaks it the first thing you need to look at is the thread quality um, is your thread old is the thread right for the project as in the fabric that you are stitching with um, because sometimes vinyls and leathers and thicker fabrics have some troubles um, aged thread is an absolute problem and if you live in a smoky environment or if you live in an environment with too much uh, or with a lot of moisture things like desiccants can really help um, and always of course make sure that your thread is um, is out of sunshine then we've got um, needles for me personally whenever my thread starts shredding it is a clear sign that it might be time to replace my needle and on this project I used three or four needles across the entire project of 48 stitched blocks all together um, so I think that was you know pretty good um, the other thing of course that can hurt your threads is your tension and remember every machine's tension is different just because the person sitting next to you is using a tension of X or Y doesn't mean that your machine will use that it is okay to play around with what tension works best for your machine now I'm loving the satin stitch that we've got going on here not only does it do a beautiful luscious satin stitch but it then finishes it off with a line of triple stitching around each um, edge of that satin and it really just finishes it off and gives it a really professional edge it also um, serves to catch any little floopies that might have been left during the trimming process and we come around it does of course make things just that little bit longer um, to stitch out because you've got one more level now some of the questions that I've had with the rock the Casbah quilt um, do I need to use embroiderers felt no you don't I use embroiderers felt because it gives me a better finish it is lightweight enough not to make the quilt too heavy and yet it is enough to give the stitches something to form around if you cannot find embroiderers felt um, and we do sell it if anybody does need it but if you cannot find that you can always use 
um, Parlon, which is fundamentally the same product. I could just never get it at a um, the Parlon brand at the right price or width. Um, and I used to use Pellant to give the same effect. So we're coming over now and I'm loading up my light to medium teal for the final colorway that we're doing on this block. So this is colorway number 27. And once again, it's just those satin stitches coming around that, um, that applique object. Um, so yes, you can play around and choose whether or not you want to use that in your project. The other question that I get is, do I have to do the quilting? Heavens no. Totally up to you. I like to do the quilting and I like the Quilt As You Go project. I love that on this particular quilt, every block is custom quilted with a different quilting style. But that does not mean that you have to do it. Um, if you wish, you can just stop your stitching after you've laid down um, and stitched all of the applique and satin stitch elements and then join it together with regular quilting. So that is totally, excuse me again, that is totally up to you. And I'm loving, these colours are just coming along beautifully. It is a striking block. Now, while you're doing the satin stitching, it's a perfect time to prepare your backing and wadding. The wadding that I've used is a polyester wadding simply because I had polyester wadding at home. That is the absolute only reason. Um, it is also, um, and I've used a, a quilt backing fabric once again because I had it in my stash here at home. For the smaller version that I'm currently working on I've decided to use leftover pieces of quilting fabric to do my backing so that the back of my quilt is as interesting as the front of it. The cottons that I have used are polyester, or the threads that I have used are polyester, simply because that is my thread of choice. It is just what I prefer. And here we go, we're on to our second last element here. And coming over to the last segment and I don't know they, they it's the word that comes to my mind is pomegranate on these sections that's just the word that hits me now when it comes to colors I do encourage you to use whatever colors you particularly like um, Again, one of the things that I loved was all of my fabrics were already in my stash when I started this. Um, I've been so amazed to see people's fabrics as they are picking them and it has really inspired me. Um, I'm loving, we've got one customer who's sending us pictures each month and she's doing every block in different colours all together. Um, and it really is giving it that beautiful Moroccan style look. Um, the next version that I'm using actually, or that I'm making is the five inch version. And it has a really dark background just for something different with citrus colors on the front um, or as, as, my, um, as my applique fabrics. Okay, and we're almost done with our stitching with this gorgeous centerpiece. Let's come and look at how we set it up for quilting. So I'm going to come through 
lay my wadding only on the back and then re-thread the needle with the wash away thread. And then I want to stitch out colorway 28 which is going to hold that wadding down. From there I'm going to come through and trim away the excess wadding. This again is going to ensure that we do not have all of this extra bulk in our seams. So you do want to use a pair of curved scissors and get as close as possible. Now I've put my backing piece on. I've returned the hoop to the machine and still with the wash away thread, I'm stitching out colorway 29. And there's no more trimming to do. I'm going to thread up with my white um, polyester quilting thread, which is just an embroidery thread in white. And I'm going to stitch out colorway 30, which is giving us all of our quilting. Now, one of the nice things about the um, all of these designs is that not only do you get this custom quilted block, but you actually get the block as a quilting design in itself. And the quilting design that we've used here is Paisley. And I'm loving Paisley because it's just got that swirls and curls and effortless, effortlessness about it. You also get the block um, or the, the Paisley quilting design as a continuous quilting design. And what I love about that is it just gives you the option of coming through and doing so many different um, projects with it over time. So if you collect the entire Rock the Casbah quilt, you will end up not only with the 30 blocks, but you will also end up with 30 quilting blocks and 30 continuous quilting designs. So this is our finished block. I'm so happy with it. Um, I think the colours just make it pop. If you are using one of the smaller design sizes and you want to make a large hoop, consider just doing double the amount of blocks and changing the colours. Once you swap those colours around, it's going to give each block a totally different look. I hope to see you for the next in the Rock the Casbah collection. As always, have a stitching day. Bye.